SciShow is supported by Dashlane. When you think of rubber ducks, you probably think of bubble baths, those huge, adorable sculptures, or debugging, if you're into programming. Or maybe you heard about a study that found over 9.5 million bacteria cells per square centimeter living inside the average toy. The point is, they don't seem all that useful for much outside of the tub. But it turns out that rubber ducks have been used by scientists in at least three ways, examining everything from ocean currents to glacial runoff to better wildlife counting methods. To start, let's go back to 1992. January 10th, a cargo ship on its way from China to the U.S. lost some containers with 29,000 rubber ducks and other bath toys. These plastic critters, called friendly floaties, spent at least 10 years drifting in the open ocean, pushed and pulled along with currents. Some ended up thousands of kilometers from the original spill site, as far north as Sitka, Alaska, or washing up in Scotland nearly 12 years later. Tracking and reporting floaty sightings became a world wide citizen science project. The oceanographer Curtis Ebesmeyer took the lead in tracing systems of ocean currents called gyres as they swirled between North America, Asia, and Europe. These oval-shaped vortexes are driven by wind patterns and the Coriolis forces generated by the Earth's rotation. Now, how many of the ducks were found where and when helped Ebesmeyer and his team learn about the rotation speed and size of two gyres in the Pacific Ocean? The researchers found that the North Pacific subpolar gyre took around three years to do a full spin in the waters between eastern Siberia and southern Alaska. Its neighbor, the North Pacific Subtropical Gyre, includes roughly 20 million square kilometers of ocean between Japan and the west coast of the U.S., all north of the equator. Understanding the rotations of these gyres isn't just cool information. It's important, because the vortexes collect junk like plastic debris in the center, kind of like the bubbles in the center of your morning coffee as you stir in the sugar. The North Pacific Subtropical Gyre is is infamous for this very reason, boasting a Texas-sized plot of pollution called the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. And by understanding gyres better and the movement of plastics that get trapped by them, we might get better at targeting our ocean cleanup efforts. Now, nearly 20 years after the friendly floaties went overboard, scientists from NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory intentionally threw 90 rubber ducks into a hole on Greenland's Jakob Savin Glacier. Specifically, it was a moulin, a hole up to 10 meters wide that let Let's melting water seep into and below the glacier. These intrepid duckies were labeled with NASA scientists' contact information in three languages, along with a promise of a $100 reward in the hopes that citizen scientists would find and report their locations. And these cheap, trackable floating markers were supposed to help researchers learn more about where and how water flows beneath the ice. Understanding glacial runoff is important because melting glaciers contribute to sea level rise, which will eventually threaten coastal cities with floods. Chunks of glaciers breaking off and glacial runoff amounts may change seasonally, which we hope to learn more about. Researchers targeted the Jakob Savin Glacier specifically because it's where nearly 7% of the ice that's breaking off of Greenland comes from. Unfortunately, not a single member of this duck expedition or the GPS probe dispatched along with them was ever seen again. More recently, scientists used life-size rubber replicas of generic ducks, not the yellow bath toys, to create a wildlife counting competition that they called the Hashtag Epic Duck Challenge. In Adelaide, Australia, researchers placed thousands of duck decoys in 10 colonies on a local beach, meant to simulate breeding colonies of the greater crested tern. And then it was time to count. Trained wildlife spotters used more traditional counting methods, like binoculars or scopes on tripods from around 37.5 meters away to mimic a normal distance that wouldn't scare birds away, and they took about 5 to 10 minutes to count on average. Other study volunteers who mostly were not trained ecologists tallied rubber ducks using drone photos instead. These pictures were taken from heights of 30, 60, 90, or 120 meters, and some of them turned out blurry because of wind and vibrations. The researchers also tested an algorithm to count the birds in these photos, which required some human input to pick the right area and isolate the ducks from the background. And it turned out, both kinds of counting with drone photos were 43 to 96 percent more accurate than counts taken from the ground with kinda blurry photos, and between 92 to 98 percent more accurate with high-quality photos. So if we can develop a computer algorithm to count the wildlife in photos without our help, that seems like a really efficient way to take animal census data. And that can help conservationists step in sooner to help threaten species. And just like a drone and a well-designed algorithm can count birds much more accurately than I can, I also rely 
rely on computer science to organize my passwords and keep my work and my privacy secure. Dashlane is a convenient but also robust and safe password manager. It's 2018. Your old school post-it note password system does not cut it. Dashlane will help you clean up your workspace and keep your passwords and private information safe. And one of our favorite features is the password changer. No one wants to come up with a new password only to find out you needed a capital letter and a weird symbol. If you have an insecure password, you just hit change now on Dashlane and voila, your Twitter password or Patreon password is now more secure. Right now, Dashlane is offering a free 30-day trial of its premium membership, which allows you to sync passwords across devices and gives you automatic backup and recovery, keeping you safe even if you lose your phone or computer. And if you love your trial and you want to sign up, use the code YouTube2018 for 10% off Dashlane Premium. That's YouTube2018, all one word, all lowercase. Doesn't seem like a particularly secure code, because they don't want it to be. Dashlane makes it easy because they want you to remember this code and get that discount. We want that too. And know that when you use Dashlane to make your passwords more secure, you're also supporting SciShow and making sure that we can continue making videos like this one. So thank you. 